Nine billion, they say, huh? It's nine billion and one because I just found out my wife is pregnant. Maybe on the next information, you don't clap anymore because it's my sixth child. <laughs> but one is adopted, at least, you know. But I think we got to change the rules of the game. If we're going to play according to the rules of the game, we're going to miss it. Globalization is over for once and for all because we got better. We got to change the rules of the game of how business is being run. And we have to change the rules the way academics are doing it. And mind you, if you're an academic in the room, I'm also a professor, but if you're an academic in the room, your diploma has just expired. <laughs> Amen. That glass is full with air and water. Why do we always ask the question if it's half full or half empty? We got it wrong. We got to start thinking about what are we doing every day and look at reality in a very different way. Is this the kind of breakfast you had? I hope not. <laughs> because this is the kind of breakfast you had. You have an acid body. And life emerges in the ocean where the pH is 8.2. So we have to make certain our body creates life. And therefore, you have to eat healthy, like our Japanese breakfasts. Did you have it this morning? <laughs> I got up too early. I was five o'clock, was on the road. I couldn't get it done because, you know, the problem is that Japanese breakfast not only gives you the seven colors of the rainbow, it actually gives you alkalinity. It gives you the basic food that you need in life. And that's the factory I tried to create in 92, 21 years ago. And I thought this is a biodegradable factory. These are biodegradable products. But I was dependent on palm oil. And that may be a biodegradable product, but it certainly is not sustainable. It took me 21 years to finally get people to understand it. And still we're consuming the stupid biodegradable products that destroy the earth and the habitat of orangutan. How can we continue? It's because we lack the ethics. Because if you have to make a decision in your life to change things, you have to decide it because you think it's for the better world. And that means ethics are critical. We can't keep on stealing less from the world. We have to start doing much better. Stealing less is stealing. Polluting less is polluting. Stop doing less bad. Do more good. And I look at my children and I say, here's my daughter, Chido, who's from Zimbabwe. She takes my little son for a walk. They find a mushroom. They pick up the mushroom. They take out a little piece, put it in a wet newspaper under the bed. Two weeks later, the molds are growing. That goes into the little plastic bag with the coffee. And two weeks later, he's harvesting. Don't tell him there's hunger in the world. Tell, he will tell you that he can fix it in a month's time. And this is what we need. <laughs> he can fix it. Now, I need to be inspired, and I want to be inspired to do things differently. And first of all, nature is a great master. And second, I'm very much inspired by women who do things. Like Wendy Hlabe, who created the first women fund investment fund that is only for women, decided by women, and with money from women. $1.4 billion on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, mind you. Never been invited to TEDx. <coughs> Suggestion. I summarize in the report to the Club of Rome 100 ideas that gives us 100 innovations that will change the world and generate the jobs. And we have to go beyond the green, because green is great, but not good enough. We have to be more innovative. And instead of always cutting costs, we have to start generating more value. Generate more value with what you have. But that requires vision. And vision needs to source itself in fantasy and then translate into reality, using innovative science and take risks. We have to learn how to take risks again. And this is Professor Xu Ting Chang, who changed my vision on this whole world of mushrooms. And he taught Carmenza Jaramillo in Colombia and my daughter Chido on how to farm mushrooms on the waste of coffee, first on the farms. But you know what, in Africa, when you tell the women on the farm you can get food from the waste that your boss doesn't want, you know what they do? They get up and dance. What did they do in DSM? They asked for a feasibility study, a technology audit, a pilot project. And then three years later, they still haven't done anything. <laughs>
I love the ad, it was beautiful, but it's not going fast enough, my gentlemen, my dear ladies. We gotta go much faster. We have to act like Africa acts, or like Cedric here in Paris is acting, a container at about two kilometers from Café de la Paix, where the waste of the coffee is converted into mushrooms, and the mushrooms delivered straight on time. 60 jobs with one container. That's changing the rules of the game. That's getting food right down to the city. And it's cheap and it's easy. And look at that. All in a container? Yeah. So are you gonna do it? I wanna know who is gonna do it, like Jan Willem Bosman has done it with uh, Laplace. All the coffee waste uh, of Laplace is being used to farm mushrooms now. We gotta change the logic. We have to have not only more food, we finally have to get better food, much better food. And it only has just begun. Because now we're looking at coffee and we know that if you have coffee grounds, they absorb a smell. You know that in your fridge, grandma did it already. So now we drink the coffee, then we farm the mushrooms, and then we put it in our clothing. Patagonia is doing it, Adidas is doing it, that means we're mixing inorganic chemistry with organic chemistry. Timberland shoes, guess what's in the sole? <coughs> Coffee. Nice. You can kick off your shoes, no smell. <laughs> These are products that work. Why aren't we doing it? Why aren't we mixing? Because we've been trained not to do it. And that's the big problem that we're having. We don't see the things that are possible. Here is my biggest project in the world. I'm the chairman of a company called Novamont. And this company is converting a petrochemical refinery in the first biorefinery. And what are we using? Thistles. Thistles? We thought it's a weed we got to kill. No, 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 no. We're turning that into the source of our biological feedstock to make plastics, lubricants, herbicides, elastomers. And you know what is the waste? Feed for the animals. This must be God calling. <laughs> this cannot just be anyone, okay? <laughs> we can generate so many products out of a thistle, and until now, we thought it was a weed. We gotta kill. Change your perception. It's urgent we do this, because the world is coming to a new world. And one of these worlds is that, look at these wastes. Now, we're in Maastricht. And you have these horrible pines of coal stone still sitting there. Now, this is what we're doing in South Africa. We're turning waste crushed stones into paper. Yeah. The only thing we need to mix with it is pet bottles. But we happen to have a lot of those as well. So we're making paper from stone. We pulverize it, mix it with pet. And we use zero water and zero trees. 100% recyclable forever. It works. It's done. It's on the market. Europe is not producing it because Europe is still doing what? The feasibility study. <laughs> what do you think is this? This is a shoe. Made out of what? 60% stone. 40% pet. And what's the black sole made out of? Coffee. Thank you. Yes, you're getting it. What are we doing about overfishing? Have you ever realized that 70% of what we fish we don't eat? 70%? But it's worse, much worse. Because 25% of the females have eggs and we kill them. Have you ever thought about a farmer taking a cow with a calf inside to be born a week later and we kill it? Boo! That's what we would cry in the homes. Impossible, but we do with the fishes all the time. So I went to study the whales, and the whales, they catch their fishes with air bubbles. So we're doing it with air bubbles now. We're catching fish with air bubbles in new kind of catamarans, and we get the fishes, we put them in cold water, not freezing water, and then they go through a little machine, and we check if the female has eggs, yes or no, back into the sea. In two years, we're back at the level of 1950, saving the females with eggs. Makes sense. Europe doesn't do it because they're just busy discussing about quota. No new technologies now. And the Omega-3 that DSM is offering you, I tell you, it is not processed with this type of a system. And they better improve. Have you ever been to Bonaire? This wonderful little place that is now a Gemeente van Nederland. Yeah? 
Have you ever realized this beauty that they advertise, that there is a quite a pity state of the corals? We have waged war on corals. That's how it looks like, in the sea and on the land. And what are we going to do about it? Turn it around. How do we do it? By reforesting the sea. This is my prime time, the first time I announce it. We are starting to reforest the sea with corals. It's time to do it. Change the rules again. We've been planting trees on land all the time. Why not in the sea? The sea is 65% of the world. So let's get the Christmas trees into the sea. Yeah. And here you see a little coral. We crack off the little fingers. It grows again. And look at this. The little piece we got, two and a half centimeters every month. We are regenerating the forest. We want people to go to Bonaire. We want people to see the beauty of the, re of the forest that can be regenerated in the sea. Holland, your country of the sea, the seas. You challenge the Spaniards. You challenge the Brits. Challenge everyone in the world by regenerating the forest. We will plant 100 million and we've done the first 3,000. Now, who's next? Who's going? If we only teach our children what we know, they can never do better than we have ever done. That's why I write fables. Because I'm failing to convince the people of my age and a little bit younger. So everything I do, I translate into a children's story. A simple one. I have 125 ready. And I want to reach 500 million children every day, just like Nestle does it. <laughs> and if they can do it, I can do it. Guess what? I have an agreement with the Chinese. All my fables are free distributed in China. I got 340 million kids guaranteed. <laughs> Use what we have. Reindustrialize our mindset. Innovate and compete. <coughs> Create a better world. With the words of Nelson Mandela, it always seems impossible until it's done. Thank you.